this work by the year 2080. Oh, wow. Back in uh, That's a huge San Francisco one. this year. I know. Yeah, it's That's fast. Much really the new Mastoni, which is like itself bigger. Yeah, they do some nice stuff. You know, one of those people <laughs> in the, in the pie. Over somebody else. I have not. Uh, 2086,000 is really just an amalgamation of many meetings. Mm -hmm. I did see Brown. And, uh, it being after 6 o'clock, let's call our board meeting to order. Um, Roll call would show all directors are present and accounted for. We have no public hearing tonight, but we have a consent agenda. Lots of things. Um, any pulls from the board? Uh, 3.12. One? Oh, 1.2, okay. There, what's on tap? Mm -hmm. Anything, Bruce? Uh, 3.4, production reports. 3.4. I okay. think I wanted uh, 3.14, but I'm just checking to make sure. Oh, yeah, about the tree makers. Yeah, we have a question about that. Okay. The 314? Yeah. <coughs> and staff would like 3.15. Anyone in the public wish to pull any items? Good evening, Becky Steinbrenner. I'd like to pull. Item 3.7, 3.8, and 3.9, please. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll move we approve the remaining. Wait, there was somebody. Oh, there's somebody else coming. <laughs> Sorry, didn't see that. Colonel Maxwell, I'd like to call 3.15. That's already been pulled. Already pulled. So they're, they're all pulled? Not all of them. We, I thought I heard him say all of them were pulled. No, no. Ma many of them have been pulled. That one in particular has been pulled. What does that mean? It has been pulled, and we're going to discuss it. It's not you, gonna you're not going to discuss it? We are going okay, to discuss it. Okay. It's been pulled, so we can discuss it. Okay. Yeah. And, and 3.8, Becky asked about as well. Yes. Okay. And 3.4? That's already been pulled. That will be pulled for comment and observation as well. Okay. And 311, the water resources, that will be considered? Um, if you want to pull that one, we can. It hasn't been already. Thank you. I, I, I hope you'll do that. Okay. Okay. And I have, uh, as long as you brought me up, I have a, re a repeat of a Freedom of Information at Public Records request that I have made before that I filed. Okay. Why don't you wait till the open uh, session? An appropriate time. And you've evaded responding with it. And it asks for you to tell me what you've been paying lawyers, including Barry. Mr. Basso. Why do sir? you hide that? Sir? Barry, it's not time yet. Later. OK, I think there was a motion to. I was trying to, yes. Um, the remaining mm -hmm. consent items. OK. Anyway. I'll second. We have a motion to second. All in favor of the remaining consent items? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. I don't know what they are. Okay, so I think the first one was 3 4. Yeah. If I'm correct. And I pulled this, and I mm -hmm. think a member of the public did as well. I just wanted to make note that uh, there is a bit of a rebound going on in November in the water use, although there also is uh, indicators that when you look at the production versus weather index, that the weather was a bit high. Uh, a higher weather index for the for November. Um, I guess it's October is the the last data. No, no November. 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 Yeah. And it's gone up a little bit. Yeah. So it's just something to keep an eye on. Okay. Mm -hmm. And any public comment on this item, Mr. Maxwell? You wanted three three point four. It's up. What I see in production reports, I'm not sure that's complete. And I'd like to be able to come into your offices and have that explained further to myself and a couple other people who are more than curious about it and also pay water bills here. What employee might be available to meet with us to discuss the data and where it's from? Go into the front desk and for ask for someone to help you on that item. They'll, well, they'll would, that, the would right there person. be someone? Would that be? Mr. Dufour, perhaps? Did he compile that information? 
Uh, I'm, I'm not even sure myself, but you show up. They know about it now, and they'll right. be, be ready. I'll call to... in advance. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. So we're finished with that one. I presume we're going to wait till the end to approve all the remaining. So the next one is what? Three seven, I think. Three seven. Three seven eight and nine. Yes. Thank you. Just a minute. I thought you'd take longer with that. I apologize. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Can we move to 3.8? I have that piece. I'm not finding the, the okay. what I want to look at for 3.7, but. Um, the main things that I see in 3.7 and 3.8, and I have page 66 here, um, Becky Steinbrenner from Aptos, is on page uh, 66, and this is 3.8. What I see is that um, Barry Swenson Builder and um, Top Shelf Inc., Aptos Ventures LLC, those are all Aptos Village devel project developers. It appears that they were given um, a lower rate for their uh, service, uh, service capacities. Um, when other people for the same size of connection, the same number of connection are paying 16,000, and this is in a fiscal year 2018, 2019, are paying $16,643. The Aptos Village developers were paying about uh, a little over $5,000 less, $11,200 for the same size connection. I'd like that explained. And um, I'm remembering now uh, th item 3.7 had to do with, um, I believe, water demand offset. I'm sorry. <laughs> my 3.7 had to do with uh, property that's not used anymore. Thank you. I want to talk about that too. Um, so shall we discuss, finish discussing 3.8, and then I can go back to 3.7? Well, 3.7, I think it was because uh, uh, we, uh, we d actually did that estimation years before, and that's when they actually paid it. Isn't that the case? Because what I want to say about item 3.7, the excess property, is I'm curious why the district is hanging on to the 180 acres up on, uh, I think it's Glenwood Drive. Um, it seems that you could sell that and get some money. And I'm curious why year after year I keep seeing you hang on to it. Um, I think your ratepayers are curious too. Um, thank you. I, um, can nine? I take a moment? 3.9. Can you tell me the subject matter? I'm, I'm sorry, my packet got really mixed up. 3.9. What is the, the topic for 3.9? Thank you. The water demand offset fees, I did not see any water demand offset fees paid, and these are I, for Aptos Village project developers, none. And I'm wondering why that is when other developers, other homeowners are paying that. And I want to commend you on presenting this good information. I've never seen this level of uh, transparent reporting on your, your board. I've, I've seen the excess property, but never this uh, very good information. So I think it goes from 2010 to 2018, and there's no water demand offset money listed for any of the Aptos Village project developers as I recognize them. So I would like some discussion about that, please. Thank you very much, and thank you for your patience. Well, what I see starts in year 2014, so that's why. Okay, so. That was just informational. Yeah, right. So 3.9, so what's next? 3.8, we're still on 3.8. No, oh, you want to do 3.8? Okay, sure. That's fine. On 3.8, I'm looking at um, attachment one, consent agenda. Apparently your page, it's opposite 234, so it must be page 233. And the, um, the customer name, again, Barry Swenson Builder, Barry Swenson Builder again, Swenson Builder, Swenson Builder, Swenson Builders, and so forth. 
I challenge again, the, and, and sus, I'm very suspicious that Mr. Swenson et al. have not gotten some kind of favored treatment. I'm also distressed uh, that you've approved continuously whatever they seem to want. And again, I'd like to stop in the offices. I'll come with a more precise question, but I want to know why they're not paying more, and should they, sh shouldn't they be? In addition to that, on the, um, the, the <laughs> Uh, what amount was charged, if any, to the Twin Lakes Church for the favored treatment it got, it got apparently at the behest of Mr. Duncan? That has nothing to do with water demand offsets. Well, was there a water demand, wasn't there supposed to be water demand offset to give them favored opportunity to add more consumption no. at Twin Lakes? No. Twin Lakes was not allowed to increase its consumption. It did some building and adding there. Well, for that purpose, I would and say you show up at the district's office and ask them fine. about that. Fine, I'll submit a public records request regarding that as well. I, I noticed that you don't have public comment listed today. I'm it says public no, none. No, 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 is public comment. There will be time. Item when four. will that be, please? It's after the agenda, consent agenda. All right, thank you. It's just after 318. It's 4.0. I, I wasn't sure how to <coughs> interpret that. I thought you were trying to hide from the public again. Okay. Good evening. Staff asked um, item 3.15 to be pulled uh, in order to make a correction on um, attachment 3 of 3.15. There's a line item right below the schedule as presented, which actually has data from the 2019 presentation. So uh, staff asked to strike that language and replace it with language that's contained in the other two attached um, salary schedules, attachment one and two, reflecting the 2019, or excuse me, 2020 salary schedule data. And again, as a reminder, these um, uh, uh, salary schedules are uh, reflective of bargained agreements that are currently in effect. Mm -hmm. Change noted. I think we also need to do 311. Is one more of that pulled? Anyone? Guess not. All right, we move on. Uh, 312. Yeah, Just I had a couple things on the, what's on tap. Yes. Just a second on 315. Oh. Have we gotten there yet? 312 is what we're okay. doing now. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, I mean, Tracy came up for 315. So yeah, she did. Why don't and you finish talking about that? Then? Well, th there has to be a motion, right? We're gonna do more I assume we were going to do all of them at the end together. Okay, that's fine. But all the rest have been informational. Yes. Correct. So okay. just um, what's on tap, a couple things. Um, on uh, This is on page 83 of the agenda. Um, on the very first page, um, the says we are pleased to announce that we has been awarded. So that should be have, I think. Um, and I thought it might, just a little note there. I don't know if anybody's taking notes, but um, then I th we're, they're mentioning the, the state um, demonstrating a strong support, but I don't, you know, they were really enthusiastically saying that this fits with their overall long-term water plan for the state of California. So I don't know if a little word about how that fit in might be uh, okay. worth, worth, I think there's a little enough room for another little sentence there. Sure. Um, sure. That's all on that page. Um, I didn't know when we were talking about leaks whether you wanted to mention anything about AMI and being able to, that soon we'll be able to pick up leaks more quickly too. We could mention it. Um, we're that planning on a bigger AMI article um, in 2020. Just look for sure. this coming. Th yeah. Just a quick little sentence to just okay. say that, that might that's coming up. Um, and then, let's see. That was the second page. Third page, which is page 85, um, on the end of the little water harvest festival one, it said performances by Zun Zun, Earth Capades, and Rocksteady, Juggling, and Face Paint. Okay, so is, is I didn't know, is Rocksteady a juggling thing, or is that a separate thing? It is a performance. That's performance. the name, That's of, the name right? of the okay. performance. Then maybe a comma after juggling would make that clear, clearer to me. <laughs> okay. And then the last thing is just on that s multi benefits of the intertie <coughs> in that left hand column, second paragraph, uh, near the bottom, uh, there's a sentence that says the surface water availability is generally anticipated between November 1st to uh, April 30th. 
however, is weather dependent. So I should say it is weather dependent. Yep, got it. Thank you. And then lastly is not a correction. It's just I wanted, you know, to be a top workplace in 2019 is a really, I just wanted to mention that I really appreciate um, our general manager and all the managers that work under you. It's a great team. You don't get that without some good stuff coming from the top. So thank you. Entire organization. Thank you. Any other comments on what's on tap? Well, I have a few things. Going back to the first page. Uh, in the first paragraph, the end of the first paragraph, there's a voted to approve TH grant. I think it meant the grant. Oh, yeah. I missed that one. And uh, <laughs> down in the second paragraph, there's a sentence that says, in addition, the State Water Resource Control Board also approved. In addition and also are redundant. So you can get rid of one of them. I'd get rid of the also. In addition, the State Water Resource Control Board approved a $36 million blah, blah, blah. Right? Good, good pickup. Okay, so that's all on that uh, page. Oh, and, and the, in addition, there should be a comma after it. So in addition, comma, this da, 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 so forth. Okay. Uh, okay, now on the next page, uh, down the question corner, um, the, the first green sentence down there under question corner, it mentions an increase in a month because of rates is $86, and I thought it was something like 156 or something. This so is for five H inch meters, I believe 86 is correct. Is it? Okay. Okay, all right, just wanted to make sure that's the right number. And over on the next column of the green, I think for um, grants, we talked about grants and reducing uh, lowered rates, rather than just say which could lower rates, I, th I would say would or should or something like that, a little more positive. I mean, could sounds like it's very speculative, but I think it, it would or it should is, is better, and really tells the truth better. Okay, on uh, the next page under Water, water Harvest Festival, um, I think it's a little, that the sentence that says this year was held in memory and celebration of uh, Vahe, and it says, who we tragically lost on the dive board boat. And of course, we didn't lose her on the drive, dive board. We lost her, but it was, we lost her because of a dive boat fire or something. So that needs to be cleaned up so it's a little clearer. Um, she, she was lost to us. We didn't actually lose her ourselves, but uh, something like that. And over in the next column uh, under the Bob Basso section, it says, what was your most, what was your most noteworthy was at Soquel Creek? I think that second was should just be struck. And it'll say, what was your most noteworthy treatment, achievement at Soquel Creek? And let's see, do I have any on the last page? No, I don't think I did. Okay. Um, so moving on, let's see. Sure, go ahead. Thank you, Becky Steinbrunner, resident of Aptos. Um, regarding the what's on tap, I would like to point out that on um, the question corner, it really should be uh, more clearly spelled out that the tier two is to support pure water SoCal because that's what it says in your, uh, your Raftelis information that was presented on uh, February 19th at the rate hearing. And it is, in fact, what is in your packet tonight in item 6.6, .6, where you will discuss possibly reducing rates because of the Pure Water SoCal uh, grants and low-cost loans that you've received. On the next page, um, the multiple benefits of intertie with Santa Cruz, I, um, I want to clarify, is it only service area one that will be included in this. I had heard you discuss earlier that it would also include parts of service area two. So um, I want to clarify that. And um, I think it would be good, since this has not gone to press yet, that you uh, update it that the water transfers actually have begun December 6th, that they're in progress. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, anyone in the public? 
That's anyone else? On that particular uh, item. Yes. On the What's on Tap newsletter. On the What's right. on Tap newsletter. Right. And President Daniels, I'd just like to make a <coughs> correction for the record. Um, <coughs> Raptelis did not base the rates on pure water SoCal. As stated in the right. uh, report, it's based on a water supply project. The cost, which is based upon, but it could have been any water supply yes, project. Yes, I know that. True. Yes. Okay. What's on tap? Ms. Steinbrenner, come back and correct what was just said by your staff. Because no, she, she has spoken. If you want an accurate She has spoken, and no, that's but, it. No, but she hadn't heard the misstatement. She has spoken. Well, she gets one I, chance. I bring her back. I give her half of my time easily. You don't give her to, to, do to that. put the facts before the record here. Um, I think your newsletter should include the fact that there are alternatives that you've not considered to be accurate in your, in, your, in your statements. And you should compliment Ms. Steinbrenner for her attempts to have you comply with the envir environmental laws of California. Well, you're, you're and also, they, they, they belong in the record here. And you should put in that we're going to, we're going to correct our attitudes and correct our, atti our, our performance here, and we're going to consider what Ms. Steinbrenner has asked to be required to consider, and that is the locker for alternatives and Mr. McGilvery's alternatives. So we don't have to spend $130 million. We can accomplish for 23 or $19 million the same water resources acquisition. I think that belongs in at least a column. And you should give Ms. Steinbrenner an opportunity to write at least half a page of her perspective because it's very timely and would be intellectually and, and administratively government honest for you to give her space in this publication. I'm serious. You owe that in the interest of integrity. We would consider all possible viable alternatives. None of those are alternatives. Those are speculation. Okay, so we're going to move on. I think the next one is 315, isn't it? 314. 314, right. And I just wanted to, I just have a question about when it said um, what mitigation meant in some of these, uh, in some of these issues, for example, uh, We'll take the last one on page 88. One emergency issue was identified at one site. The emergency issue has since been mitigated. Well, in, in relation to trees, that usually mean the limb or the tree is trimmed in such a way that uh, if it's deemed an emergency, it may be falling over, it's taken out or, or reduced in such a manner so it doesn't create that. And is that part of the, uh, the trees that were planted at the tannery? Is that part of the... Not trees. We probably I, I, we don't have the benefit of Christine here. She's out ill, so I'm tannery. Um, yeah, tannery. It's it's the trees that are against the backside, mm -hmm. some of which are coming over from the neighbors. Yeah, but not not that we planted. They were right. existing yeah. trees. Yeah, that that are in danger. The arborist has said that immediate a threat, imminent danger, threat. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That was just that was my uh -huh. that was my question. Yeah. Is that what does that mean? Mitigation is it just uh, like. Snip, 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 or chop, chop, chop. Or I think in this case it was it was chop. It's basically hedging them back. Okay. They come from the neighbor's side of the fence, and they're overlapping some of the I think some of the wiring, and where the and where the pump house is. Yeah. Okay. I can get you a more definitive description if you like. You want me to get that? Okay. But it's a threat to uh, uh, health uh, or structure, so that sort of thing. Well, yeah, and also that's the kind of thing that came up at that one conference I went to recently about fire, the fire hazard. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's yeah. not only C&G&E, &E, now the whole stuff is the tree cover, but uh, water districts are too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else on 314? Okay, we'll move on to 315. We already had that. Well, we did that, right? Okay. <laughs> so we need to approve. No, we need to approve. We need to approve these things. So I hear a motion to approve these. A motion to approve. Okay. I'll second it. Oh, okay. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Okay. So now we move on to oral communication. Anyone wish to address us? Please come up. Good evening and happy holidays. Thank you. Uh, I'd rather be shopping than here, but I did drop off a couple of uh, papers at the office yesterday. I hope you got them. Uh, it's a copy of two bills, uh, one that has three businesses in it, and if you have that copy, you can see their water bill is $78 for the month. One is a beauty shop. Uh, the other bill has four people living in it, all adults. 
$190.80. I looked at this other bill and I see that there's no charge for the second tier on that particular building. Uh, I really think it's unfair that just residents are being charged that second tier. Uh, I'm also disappointed, I had talked to another friend today, saw her bill, she's also in the Soquel District. Uh, her bill was $80. Uh, she has four people living in her house, they shower, they have a dishwasher, and something was wrong with the structure of tier two. I mean, we're not charging everybody the same thing. Uh, and I am disappointed in the fact that you did get the, I know the grant's a one-time thing, and I think that's great and you got the other funding, which is good. I wish you would have waited before you went to that second tier until you found out the results of this. So, you, you know, but you did mention in the last meeting I came to that you were thought it was too high. I'm back here again to say, I'd like to hear something about that second tier. It is ridiculous. I've had a bill go from $80 to 190. And I, that is just not justified. And it's not fair for everybody. If we're all gonna get to charge the same thing, then I won't complain. But I don't like to see somebody's bill at $80 and a friend at $80, and I'm paying $190. Last month it was over $200. So I really wish you'd go back. I think you mentioned it, and I appreciate the fact that you did bring it up at the last meeting that you thought it was too high. I think $30 is just ridiculous. But I thank you for, much for listening to me, and I hope you really consider working on that second tier. And again, happy holidays. Thank you. Good evening, Becky Steinbrunner, resident of Aptos. I want to thank Ms. Miller for again coming to you as a ratepayer and asking that you really examine this tier two restructuring that you've done. It is unfair and it's really causing many people severe economic hardship. I hear it every day out there <laughs> and I'm not a ratepayer. Um, I, and Dr. Jaffe, I want to thank you for asking that staff bring it back to the agenda. I see noted that it will not come back on your agenda until next year in the spring. But I also note again item 6.6 .6 on your agenda today to pay Raftalis money to re-examine this whole issue. What I'd also like to um, submit for the record is uh, the letter that I wrote and was printed in the um, Aptos Times, the December 1st, 2019 edition, describing the, the reasons behind the legal action that I've taken against the district and the Pure Water SoCal project. I'd like to submit that for the record so it does indeed get placed in the record and want to, um, I'll speak more about that before the closed session. But I'm very grateful to the Times. They approached me, and I'm grateful to them for asking that there be a balanced story presented to the public. And finally, in the spirit of the season, I just want to thank you for your good staff. I want to thank Ms. Olin for always having a copy of the, the agenda printed out for me because I have a lot of difficulty reading large documents on the screen, and I used to have to contact her every week. and. I don't do that, I just go and it's always there. And so Ms. Olin, I wanna thank you. That's very kind of you. You have good people working for you and I'm, I'm, I appreciate them. Um, the staff, when I come in, are always very pleasant and always very attentive and, and respectful and I'm, I'm always very happy for that. And um, I'm, I'm gonna miss Vi a lot. <laughs> she was a gem, as we all know. And um, at a time when many people, many other staff would walk past and I had arrived after hours and I was under a time deadline to get something in, pick something up, Vi would see me waiting at the back door and she would always stop and come and help me. One time I remember she was driving out of the parking lot with her two kids in the car and she stopped and came over and talked with me and found out that I had been late in getting because of traffic to pick up a document and I stayed with her kids in the car and she went in and got the document I needed. She was a gem and we're all gonna miss her a lot. Thank you. Anyone else? Colonel Terry Maxwell, a ratepayer and a customer 
And I would agree with the compliments of many of your staff that Ms. Steinbrenner makes reference to. They're competent, they give your customers their money's worth, and they go beyond. I can't say that about my interactions with your management and your board. I wish that I could. I'd so much rather just say complimentary things. But the mismanagement that's gone on here by the Soquel Creek Water District, which people have lived here 30 years longer than I have, tell me was endemic long ago. But certainly for the last 25 years, your, your management, your board, of super, your board decisions have been negligent, have been careless, and perhaps comp more than compromised to help people like Swenson and other clients, coincidentally, of Mr. Basso's friends and associates or buddies. And incidentally, a judge, Gallagher, ruled against Ms. Steinbrenner twice. He had a terrible conflict of interest, having worked for you for 23 years, and Mr. Basso been his partner. Plus, Mr. Basso negligently, unethically, wrongfully sought a sanction against Ms. Steinbrenner of $6,500 in front of Judge Smalls, who also bent over backwards, I watched it, to accommodate Mr. Basso. That's what Mr. Basso does as an attorney. He helps judges get elected, and then those judges accommodate him in ways he wants that are provably, in the opinion of many people I've talked to in this county, unjust and wrongful and unfair. An example is the way Ms. Steinbrenner was treated by your lawyer and you all. She's trying to get you to comply with the Environmental Quality Act to protect every one of us in California, and especially children now and in the future in this county. And you've neglected to do that. You've waffled as badly as the Republicans defending Trump. Now, I submitted a freedom of, uh, public records request three times. Here's my fourth time. I'd like this in the public record. Principally, I'm asking for the billing records that of Mr. Uh, Basso's f fees and what he's done for you. Not that long ago, back to 2016. And I've asked for the same information regarding Best Krieger and Best. If you don't comply with the California Public Records Act this time, I will take it to the Attorney General. Don't compel me to do that. In addition, I've got a public statement here for the record as well. If you'd put that in the public record. And that relates to the fact that Mr. Basso got accommodations from Judge Smalls and Judge Gallagher that are downright unethical, unprincipled, and wrongful. Why do you participate this way? Why can't you just comply with the law, treat Ms. Steinbrenner with the dignity she deserves? And why do you demonstrate such negligence, paying Best Best and Krieger hundreds of thousands of dollars in a lawsuit against a lady by herself asking you to comply with the law. Mr. Basso could have saved you all that money and the embarrassment is going to come by telling you to comply with the law. That was unethical for him not to do so. Thank you. I, for one, reject your vile and incorrect comments about our attorney, Mr. Basso. Not to mention slanderous. Okay, uh, moving on. I, I'd else? actually like to, this brings up a yep. point. Mm -hmm. um, I'll make a joke of it, but I'll, then I'll make the serious point. On our agenda tonight is compensation for being a director. And I wonder how much compensation we get for being yelled at, slandered, et cetera. That's the joke, because I don't expect any. But when, when there's um, attacks made, slanderous attacks, and I don't want my answer now from our new attorney, but I'd like a, an answer, you know, when it's been researched. What do we, what do we have to uh, allow? Absolutely. Judge, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we because, because the meetings have become, uh, and I think it's because of they're televised and members of the public think that they can uh, get their message out to people because they're televised. I'm not sure that's why. But um, I'd just like to know wh what, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll work with Ron and staff and we'll get you that information. Thank you. Thank you. More for public comment? Yes, I came here tonight to honor a great man who's done a great service for this entire community for the last 50 years, mm -hmm. and I'm appalled at the way he's being treated. He is the most ethical, upstanding citizen in this community. No one is better than he is. And he does, he, I can't believe what's being said about him tonight, and I find it incredibly objectionable and disgusting. Thank you. Next, anyone else? He's not alone. I mean, he, we all get called that too, so. 
Um, anyone else? Then I think we're moving on. Uh, any board comment? I would like to mention that you know the there's been reports of people having 200, 300, blah blah blah, hundred dollar raises, and that cannot happen without people using more water this year than they used last year. Whether the number is the 86 that was in the, the what's on tap or 156, uh, you can't get a 200, 300, 400 dollar increase in your rates without using a lot more water. It's just impossible. So. A lot of people are complaining about it and they need to look at their own situations. It may be a leak they don't know about. We have services to help them, you know, and they need to call on us to find out because indeed a $200 raise or $300 raise is obnoxious and you'd like to find it and fix it and not have it again. So please call on us to help. I do have one thing. Please. I noticed that uh, two of the ex uh, directors are here Jack Beebe and Dan Kriegian. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. I assume it's to honor Bob, and I apologize for you having to put up with the the public comments that are slanderous. Okay, so well, the other thing is is that you have to compare um, apples with apples. I mean, tell me what one bill was and what another bill was. You're not talking about how much water was used. So one family of four used $86 worth of water and another household of four used 200. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the real comparison, not how many people are in the house. Right. Okay, so we move on after that to management update 5.1. Sure, yeah. I don't have anything additional to add to the conservation customer service field. Are there any questions about the report? Um, sure. Yeah, a couple just, um, you had mentioned that um, you talked to Scott Sally and um, they had some lessons learned about their experience. And also, um, I just wondered if we're finding any leaks more quickly now that we're starting to use that system in part of the district. We're finding leaks really quickly. Great. We're checking the leaks, leak reports, and notifications every morning and then Great. following up on those that same day. Oh, excellent. So, yeah. That's not great. on the weekends. We're not no, working still, Saturday that's, and that's Sunday, but still. Better than once mm -hmm. a month. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and we have about 4,000 services now that yeah. are reading to the AMI system. So. Well, great. Yep. And did Scotts Valley have anything helpful to add? They, um, they did, mainly related to the portal. Uh, they tried to roll out their free um, uh, customer portal through their meter manufacturer, who's different than ours. And there were some limitations with that, and they ended up pulling it back because they didn't feel that it met their needs. And so their advice was, you only really want to do that once because otherwise it confuses people. Right. Um, they okay. think they've already set up a login, and and then now they have to do it again. And so that was one of the big tips. To work out the bugs. Mm -hmm. and make sure you stick yep. with the system. Okay. And then they used a different system, and now they're using WaterSmart? Correct. Okay. Yep. Well, we may look at that. We're going to look at WaterSmart and some other products that are out there. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Well, just, just a question. I, I noticed that uh, you're verifying that the leaks are indeed happening. Correct. Are you? F what's the status on that? Are we finding that that there's false reports of leaks? Um, sometimes it's like people leave water on and maybe they've turned it off. Um, the meters are more sensitive than I think what we've seen with the, the drive-by um, metering system. And so, uh, especially for like uh, multifamily complexes where there is more commonly 24-hour continuous usage, that's what the leaks are based on. So it's much harder to verify that there's an actual leak in those cases without doing a full water shutoff. But for single family homes, I think we're seeing if there's a leak alarm, then there's a leak going on. And, and probably, I would say, 95% 90, of the cases. And I think um, you've also shared with me that there have been several instances of uh, water hoses just being left on. So it's not a leak per se, but, well, but it's still. We've probably found oh. in the last few months 10 people that have had a hose running that was left on. Imagine they're approximately when you let them know that what's happening. Oh yeah, we're we're shutting it off um, and letting people know and yeah, and if it's you know of a significant threshold and nobody's home, uh, then we turn the water service off, leave a door hanger, and then mm -hmm. follow back up. And it, with the with these false positives, 
are you exploring ways to decrease it by changing the algorithm in some way or is there flexibility in that? Yeah, we haven't quite got there yet, but we will be taking a look at that, especially for the multifamily. Like you can turn off the leak alarm, um, but there's some risks in doing that. Sure. And but uh, can you say the leak alarm goes off when these things happen instead of those things? Yeah, you can actually reprogram okay. each meter. Okay. So we could change the factor on that and that would change the, the leak detection capability. Anything else? With the weekend issue, um, I mean, at some point we could <coughs> use emails and text numbers for people and leave and let them know on weekends. It wouldn't be, you know, so as complete as having a person show up, but at least they'd have some warning that there might be a problem. Yeah, once we get a customer portal in place, people can, you know, sign up for text alerts or email alerts and that'll be an automatic Feature, I'd, like, so I'd like to have that savings uh, mm -hmm. daily there as well as we can. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Anything? Okay. Um, engineering's next. Good evening. Uh, there's a couple items here that you haven't seen before, and uh, the one, you know, the third bullet, it talks about a trench failure in La Selva Beach that the county public works has come to us and said, we'd like you to fix that, and it's a big, it's a big uh, 3,000 lineal feet of uh, <coughs> water main trench that was installed in 81 and you know the roads out there aren't the best to begin with and so it's but anyways they've requested us and we are required to um, fix it so we're working on a strategy to do that mm -hmm. and we'll have to bring that to you for um, bidding and approval um, also uh, we are putting <coughs> planning to put a uh, uh, PG&E service out at the Canyondale Soul Tank. That's our one site that doesn't have power. And um, top of the list there is startup at Granite Way Well um, like next week. We get our PG&E meter for that tomorrow. And any questions or comments on any of the other items? Anything? I guess not. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. O&M. She's not here, but we're more than willing. I, I guess we can talk. The second bullet is, it does acknowledge that uh, the city called us, uh, or we called a meeting with the city, and we were able to open the inner tie on December 6th due to um, the weather, change in the weather. Um, and Christine points out that we're bringing in just under a million gallons a day there. Okay. Any issues with that turn on? No, not at this time. Okay. Well, yes, there were some. They uh, had to throttle uh, the, the inner ties so that it, it was peaky and mm -hmm. getting up to 15, 1,700 gallons a minute. Mm -hmm. it, it quickly settles down, but the city asked us to kind of get that a little more predictable, okay. and so they throttled it down to a more manageable, and it, it prevents starting and stopping, so it stays on for a longer duration. It, it was uh, typically running about 12 to 13 hours mm -hmm. over the course of a day. Mm -hmm. And I believe this time we don't actually have a boundary, do we? No. So, but still, very much of it goes to area one, and then a little bit spills over to area two, and then maybe a touch to three and et cetera. Yeah, right? it won't go to three, because there's a pump station there that would okay. need to be activated for that. Uh, we did notify ser service area one and two customers, okay. um, but that amount of water wouldn't necessarily make it right. for far into two. That's right. Any other questions? I guess not. Thank you for that one as well. Uh, special projects? Yeah, Melanie's not able to be with us tonight. She was invited to a uh, program that has um, some of the leaders in the state on recycled water from Berkeley, Stanford, the state itself. And so uh, she's attending that two-day event to provide input. They wanted to know about Pure Water SoCal and, and its successes and things they can take from that to help further the state along. Right. Any other it says items will be presented? Only Nothing else to, to report. Okay. Uh, special project finance report. I don't necessarily have anything to add, but I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Questions? Guess not. Thank you. 
We'll see you later, though. <laughs> <laughs> Human resources? Um, I can just answer any questions. Nothing to add. Any questions? Looks like not. And general manager. Yeah, I'll just report out that I'm very appreciative and grateful to, to work with this organization. The, the leadership of the board, each and one of you bring your own perspective. You know, you donate so much uh, time and effort to it and to the, to the management staff and to the organization uh, as, an, as an entire entity. It's a, it's a mm. privilege to be, to, to be in this seat and to work with all of y'all. I will add, since I know it's going to get, uh, uh, you know, in a bigger flare about Bob Basso, I remember, um, and since uh, Jack and Dan are here, uh, Laura Brown, uh, you know, a previous general manager for uh, Soquel Creek Water District, uh, walked into her office one day and she was just smiling. I said, you know, I said, what's up? And she goes, that Bob Basso, he is the most ethical guy I know, you know, and that always stuck in my mind. And uh I know she had great respect for you, Bob, and we'll get to you in a minute, but that comment in particular, I just I wanted to share that. Right. Okay. So any public comment on this uh, management update? Thank you. Be Becky Steinbrenner, resident of Aptos. Um, I want to thank uh, Mr. Dufour for the engineering report. I have written regarding the Granite Way well and the aesthetics of that site. Um, I have written your board and I never got a response. It is um, in the view of many who have to pass by it very unsightly. And I don't see any indication that there will be landscaping to soften the, um, the fence, the very high fence all around it um, just this week there were some low-growing succulents put in on the corner of Trout Gulch and uh, Cathedral, but nothing to really soften the structure. This is nothing at all like what I was given back in 2015 when the Aptos Village project design was modified and the well site was moved to this location. Mr. Dufour at that time sent me pictures and talked about how it would fit in with the character of the neighborhood. This does not fit in with the character of the neighborhood. Unless, as I put in my letter, jokingly, you wanna call this the jail <laughs> associated with the nearby Mid-County Safety Center for the sheriff. But I, I really hope that you will put some vines or something there because it is very unsightly. Um, I also want to commend you on um, initiating the water, surface water transfer pilot project. I wonder why there was not similar fanfare in public media about it this year as there was last year. I would like to see you emphasize that more publicly because it is part of your community water plan and people do want to know what is happening. So I think it's a great example of you cooperating with the city of Santa Cruz and I'd really like to see it highlighted and made more public in the media. Um, and I'm happy to hear uh, Chairman Daniels that it will indeed include service area two uh, because that was not stated in your what's on tap as I pointed out to you earlier. Um, and uh, finally, um, I want to just point out that in your finance report, it talks about the next scheduled rate increase beginning January 1st and becoming effective in February. And that was, I didn't see that in your what's on tap either. The people are gonna be unhappy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anyone else? Okay, seeing no one. District Council, oral report please. Yes, I think Probably two meetings ago, or maybe three, I mentioned there was a ca case called Wild versus Dunsmere. And in my understanding, well, that was a case which held that you could have a referendum on Prop 218 rates. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, what I had read said it was not being taken by the Supreme Court. That was wrong. The Supreme Court has taken that case. Um, it's been brief. They haven't said oral argument. And that was a third district 
case out of Sacramento. The interesting thing is that since that case, the third district has had another case, Amador County Water Agency, in which they've taken the opposite position, that Prop 218 does not allow a referendum. And the notation in that case is, we previously held the other way. They don't really say what that means, but it's an indication that perhaps they're having second thoughts, and hopefully the Supreme Court will say the same thing. That is, you can have an initiative on Prop 218, but not referendum. So let's wait and see. Now Josh gets to watch. Does it clear now? Okay, now we move on to our administrative business. There are, is no conditional or unconditional will serves, that's 6.1, and we now go to 6.2, a resolution honoring Robert Bob Basso. Yeah, and Tracy, before you jump in, let me just, uh, the way staff m might recommend that this could go tonight is that uh, Tracy will say a few words and- um, I already, I already you briefed? I, I okay, did. okay, great, mm -hmm. thanks. We're good. <laughs> You've got it worked out. We're good, we're good. Well, I get the great pleasure tonight of handing you the memo um, for the resolution in honor of Bob Basso. Um, I know we all have wonderful things to say, but I'm gonna pass this one over to the board. Okay, thank you. So, I'm going to read our uh, item on this. All these whereas is. Resolution of the Board of Directors of the Soquel Creek Water District in appreciation, appreciation, of Robert Bob Basso District Council, General Council, 1969 to 2019, 50 years. The Board of Directors of the Soquel Creek Water District at its December 17th, 2019 meeting made the following findings, recitals. Whereas Robert Bob Basso began representing the legal interests of the Soquel Creek Water District in 1969 after serving as captain in the U.S. Army Intelligence. Bob earned his law degree from the University of California, Berkeley, Bolt Hall School of Law in 1964 and is admitted to the State Bar in 1965. And whereas now in 2019, after 50 years of sound, high quality legal representation, Bob is retiring as the district's general counsel and whereas Bob is easily the area's most well-versed legal expert on county water issues, having served as general counsel for the Soquel Creek Water District for 50 years, representing other county water districts and serving many long-established Santa Cruz businesses and individual clients on water law and land use matters. And whereas Bob um, is a recognized leader in the state of California water agency legal affairs community, having served for many years as a member of the Association of California Water Agencies Legal Affairs Committee, representing district concerns and staying on the pulse of water issues statewide. And whereas Bob is respected as an attorney with heart and compassion, who consistently gives back to his community, whether it's his involvement with Habitat for Humanity, the Santa Cruz Bo Boys and Girls Club, or as a lecturer in economics at UC Santa Cruz, teaching law in the business environment to economics and legal studies students, and whereas Bob's ability to communicate issues from a legally sound perspective in a way that is sensible and easily understood has been a gift to the board, indeed, staff and district customers and the public, and whereas Bob is recognized by the board and staff for being extremely responsive and accessible even when he's on vacation, and whereas Bob has unsurpassed quick wit and a wry sense of humor that always brings a smile to the face of those he works with and a well-timed levity to challenging matters. And whereas Bob is flexible yet rigid when it's necessary, he is balanced and never short of creative, bright ideas. And now there, be, let it be resolved by the Board of Directors of the Soquel Creek Water District that we all join in in extending our sincere appreciation for Robert Bob Basso's remarkable 50 years of legal representation to the district and for the innumerable contributions and legacy he will be leaving with the district, passed and adopted by the Board of Directors this 17th say of December by the following vote. I'll move to approve. <laughs> a second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We, 
we'll do pictures now. Oh, you can. Well, we'll uh, uh, no, later. Pictures later. to do a couple photos and then we have uh, a little slide presentation. Yeah, if we want to go ahead and cue up the slide presentation now, I think that'd be great. And then I know Taj has something very, very special um, on behalf of all of the districts that we're going to unveil that now. Pretend. Are you going to allow a little public comment yeah. time along yeah. the way? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. I you want to do that now? <laughs> <laughs> Here. Where will this go in the house? <laughs> right. So this, this represents how flexible but firm you are, how fair and balanced you are, and, and your bright ideas in here. <laughs> I like the back. <laughs> oh, oh, this is great. <laughs> Bob, look yeah. at the back. <laughs> <laughs> says on the back, Survivor, Soquel Creek Water District. <laughs> 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 Anyone else want to say anything about Bob? I, I, okay, I'll say something. And, or do you want to go? Why don't you go first, Dan? Good evening, members of the board. My name is Dan Kriege, and I stood around here a long time over the years. I think I've spent more Tuesday nights with Bob Bossel than anybody else in the world other than Suzanne. <laughs> and after about 40 years, uh, we had a lot of Tuesday nights together. Um, when I came here, I came from a water district. I was working well, just had an extremely fine attorney. He was well known nationwide, and at least statewide and nationwide, and uh, did a lot of writings and things. And uh, when I came here I, on the board, I watched Mr. Basso, and uh, I thought to myself, I wonder what, he, what he's going to do, you know, hardly out of, out of college and hardly got a law degree. But anyway, he got the job here. And uh, over the years, I watched him and the, and the way he, he really took over as not just the attorney for this district, but kind of a, a guiding hand. And I think that uh, most water districts, most agencies, most government agencies don't have that kind of thing. And I go back to Bob Basso and then Laura Brown and then Ron as managers. I think they could attest. Maybe they don't even realize it. But Bob always had this guiding hand where he did it with humor, and, but he did it also where we knew that, yeah, he was probably right and we should follow his, his direction. And he never pushed anything other than when he had to say that's it and he drew the line. But overall, I think it his basic in integrity and his ability to work with people just made everybody like him. And uh, I, for one, really have had a great honor just to be working with him for so many years. And I wish you real well, Bob. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. And I just want to add that, you know, it's one thing to, to know your stuff and to be have that integrity and to really know the law and to know the water system, but to also be a joy to work with and really care about the district, then that's shown all the time, that you really care about what happens, you know. So thank you. Thank you. 
I'd like to follow up by mentioning that uh, we've often considered him the sixth member of the board. And he almost <laughs> votes sometimes. We have to, we have to stifle him to, to not vote, but because <laughs> he often knows as much or b sometimes better than us. And so uh, it's great to have that resource here, and we all appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Jack, do you want to say some things? What more can I say? It's been a privilege and an honor to have served on the board and have Bob Bonsall as our legal counsel. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I have a unknown fact that the board and probably the members of the board of the audience don't remember, but Mr. Bonsall is also an engineer mm -hmm. and he served as the additional head engineer to the district and I can say Good luck to you, Bob, and thanks again for everything. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Thanks, Jack. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't planning on speaking. My name is Tracy Basso Nielsen. Um, this is my father. He's going to cry. He always <laughs> cries. <laughs> um, 50 years is a long time that was before i was born and i remember um this is my first time being here at a soquel creek water district meeting welcome but i remember my dad going to a lot of them <laughs> growing up and i remember um seeing him come home for a quick bite and then taking off for a meeting um my dad always always put his family first and i feel like people here also were part of his family and he enjoyed his time here so much, and we are so proud of him. And um, congratulations, love you. Though so I feel that us here on the board feel like he always put us first. I mean, he puts everybody first. <laughs> My name's Becky Steinbrenner. We have not always had the the most uh, friendly relationship, but it's been very respectful. And I, I want to thank you. And I have worked um, in this past year quite a lot with Mr. John Cole, who is a ratepayer that took the district to court and won. And John Cole always has the highest opinion of you and has counseled me that way. He said, I like Bob. You can work with Bob. He'll work with you. <laughs> And you demonstrated that over the time this year that I have had uh, experiences with the district in legal matters. And most favorably, I remember the, the time when we had the one and only telephone conference in your office. And you were really nice to work with. And, and you, you put me at ease, you were fair, you were firm, and it, w it turned out to be a very good experience because of your, your knowledge, your willingness to work with people, and I appreciate that very much, and we'll continue. Thank you, Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Thank you. And I hope you get to uh, have some good gardening moments. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Well, we're going to take a little break then because we've got a little bit of refreshment back here in honor of Mr. Basso. Uh, just get a yeah, let's get a, a picture with the board, and then Bob, and then uh, Dan, if we could get up there, and is Jack still here? Yeah. Oh, we have a slideshow, yeah, okay. too, don't we? Right. We'll get all of y'all in Yeah, we'll do that during the... Uh, and
all of them yeah. thanks yeah and uh, well I don't know I'd just like to see yeah, all yeah, of them yeah. I, didn't, I didn't get to see them all <laughs> I was just laughing because half the photos my mouth's open because I'm totally talking. <laughs> and my eyes are closed. So you know. <laughs> I'm talking and you're closing your eyes. <laughs> okay. I think I think we're back on the air. Yep. Yeah. Next item is six point three, <laughs> review and appointment of board members to various standing committees and boards. Yes. There's I'll a mistake right there. The public outreach committee is Tom, not me. Okay. Uh, public outreach. Right. Okay. Thank you for catching that. Mm -hmm. um, so what we got in front of you tonight uh, are the committees or boards that uh, that you can appoint each other to. What we try to do in the memo, uh, and Emma had uh, a lot of help in putting this together, thank you, uh, is list out all the committees or boards that are available to you. Not that some of them need to be elected on now, but we wanted you to have the full breath so you didn't like say I want to be on that and then later go, oh, you know, have a regret or whatever. So just to start from a high level, so there's three standing committees. Those are laid out pretty, uh, and they're, they need to be uh, action taken on those tonight if you want to change. Then you also have the Santa Cruz Mid-County Groundwater Agency, which uh, 
Dr. LeHue and Dr. Daniels are on. It's, it's Dr. LeHue. That uh, term will be up in March, so it's not. It's still got a little ways. Oh to yeah, go. yeah. So it's not be up in March now. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not up now, but we wanted to put that. I mean, you they could keep, vote they on. They keep it extending it, whether you know it or not. Yeah. Um, and by the way, those meetings are not going to be every other month. They're now going to quarterly. Right. Yeah, we're going to. Uh, that's correct. Thank you for for staying that. So it'd be less of a uh, load. Zone five, which uh, Director Christensen is now on, and I believe that one is is up tonight. Is that right? It's not. Oh, up oh it's up next it's, year. It's, um, no, it's actually if the board wants to put someone new on, then they can. Okay. Okay, no term limits. And then, then of course, there's LAFCO with uh, uh, Dr. I mean, uh, uh, Director Lather was recently appointed to, so that one still has, a, has to run its course, I believe. Um, so anyway, with that, I think what you focus on tonight are the three standing committees uh, and any other committees that you'd recommend or our boards? The, the MGA. Yeah. You might want to yep. go ahead and take care of that, even uh, even though it doesn't change. If you do change, right. uh, in, until March. Okay. Well, any preferences? Sir? Well, I'm hoping, Tom, you're going to still do MGA. I would like to, but I don't know if we'd wait till March or do it now. Um, well, it's, it's good to know because we can plan for that in the future. Um, I mean, it says it expires then, so it's just a matter of can we. Yeah, you can renew it now, I think. Uh, yeah, you could definitely renew now if the board would like. And I would like to continue on with MGA as okay. well. Well, let's do it now then. Yeah, yeah I, was, I'm, I mean, I'm, I don't know how much it's going to meet, but how often it's going to meet, but I think it'd be just getting two. And I'd also want to point out that the Zone 5. Uh, schedule and the public outreach committee schedule are in conflict. They they meet at the same time. Oh, geez. Unavoidably, so it seems an either or on that one for sure. And then the other aspect of it is, you know, it's about a ten minute meeting and they don't really discuss or matter actually. Uh, it's more budget budgets public. Uh, Public works, kind public of works, that's yeah. what I was thinking of. Public mm -hmm. works projects and budget, and I just, and furthermore, the next, the other thing I observed from being on it for now five years, uh, and just going not all the time because I always had to choose public outreach or community outreach, but anyway, is uh, I think they raid the stormwater budget regularly, for especially as in 2017 in particular, when the roads were washed out, mm. they took, uh. took money out of that mm. budget to be able to work on repairing a $50 million dorm road. Mm. So it's, uh, you know, it's not as substantive on water as you might think. So uh, what do you recommend, that we not have somebody regularly attend and just monitor the agenda to see if there's anything yeah. that would warrant um, attending? I think that's how we handled it in the past, too. Mm -hmm. So we did make a point of attending uh, when they actually did a, a comprehensive uh, report on the, uh, the drainage on Capitola because that was a major issue on the part of uh, Stephen Carlin, who was mm. a city council member, and he was appointed to the stormwater, and that was the only thing anyone from outside the county had to say about anything. And they finally, after a year, did the report, and she was already off. I had a question about you said that you said public outreach and, and the flood control conflict, but one the public outreach is on the second Tuesday and the other one's on the fourth Tuesday. Yeah, somehow they regular the regular council. Huh. I mean, I, maybe they cancel they cancel, cancel things and then yeah, maybe the fourth Tuesday isn't correct. Maybe they pick other days. Yes, it that might they can cancel and then reschedule. Okay, uh, so it's not like. Board meetings, technically. So that's not a voting position. You have no it vote. Is a vote. It is a vote, but you know, five city uh, supervisors, Supervisor. so they kind of rule the roost. Yeah. yeah, there's five supervisors. There's a you know sort of an ad hoc number from 
Well, should we take each thing separately? Okay. And just confirm? Okay. Yeah, and just so you know, we're checking right now. Um, I mean, two options that come to mind. You could change the public outreach committee meeting time. I'm not suggesting that. but that, Or we're, uh, Josh is checking to see if you if you can appoint a staff member to attend as a representative. I'm not sure that's able, but we just want to give you your full options, not right. able to vine for that or not. Well, I, I did that for a while, and, and uh, it's unclear it would be worth staff members' time to go there and sit and approve the agenda. And you know, some of the stuff is just very rinky dink and, and not worth uh, anyone's time. Great. Well, my impression is that a lot of the decisions are made around the yeah. meeting. Yeah. The meeting itself has been lasts about 15 minutes. Oh. At most. Another option might be you could still appoint some uh, a board member and just monitor the agenda and if it was like a crucial meeting or something. We could yeah, I, and I'd be willing to do that. A 15-minute meeting sounds like I work on the west side, so it wouldn't be yeah. difficult okay. for me to get to it okay. if I needed to. Okay. <coughs> All right. uh, another thing that from when I did it is that it was always on the county's agenda, but they kind of played with their agenda sometimes. So. Sometimes you'd go in at nine and sit there until they take it at eleven thirty or something. Aha, uh -huh, but that was one of my few contributions to the mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was to establish the set time. So you know Good. what time is and Good. Time Glad it's changed. Good. So that would make it work. Uh, All right. But it's usually in the morning at ten thirty. Mm -hmm. So that's roughly when the public outreach meeting be. So well, uh, can I make a motion that Bruce does the flood control? Yes, sure. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay, that's unanimous, I believe. So we were talking about the, uh, was it public outreach or, or water resources? Okay, so it might as well go in the order. Then. Okay, yeah. water resources. I'm I'd like to stay on that. And I would too, but I don't need to be the chairman. You two want to switch then? We could. Sure. Okay. Let's do that then. Anyone I'm else want to be on that one? You still want to be an alternate? Yeah. But if someone else would like it, it's fine. Uh, no, let's put another meeting on because it's at 4 o'clock. If you want to do it. Yeah. The other two are pretty good. I don't think I've gone on that committee this year. So they show I don't. Even if I do hit traffic sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we'll switch those two positions. Just kind of nice that way. Carl is not chair of every subcommittee. I know. I, th I think <laughs> just there was just a little bit of turmoil at some point. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So do, do we make a motion on each one, or? Or we can do them all together. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. So this one, that one's R Rochelle and Carla, and you the alternate. But yep. we're, there was two are going to switch. Okay. Okay, and uh, public outreach. Who wants to do that one? I mean, I'm still fine to do it. Okay. Uh, even though it says I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I know. apologize. I'd, I'd be willing to be an alternate, but I obviously yeah, that would be there, fine. there would be conflicts if there was the flood control going on at the same time. So I don't know if that's a good idea. Or I don't think I've ever been called. Okay. <laughs> I'll volunteer not to be cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did we, and Carla, do you still want to be the chair of that? Uh, I don't want to be the chair of that either. I'm, I'm, I'm Doesn't matter. usually there. So. You want to take the chair? We can switch it if you want. I don't care either way, but that's fine. The third Bruce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, so then it would be me and Carla and then Bruce as the alternate? Mm -hmm. Okay. What about finance? Everybody happy? I'll do it. But someone else could take it if they want. I, especially, I'm, getting, I'm especially more interested in, uh, in the coming sort of I think there'll still be lots of challenges there. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if you're into it, that'd be great. Okay, so that one doesn't change then, I guess. Okay. But we decide on who's chairing the public outreach. Did you 
Um, Tom. Tom. So I'm switching now. Okay. Well, does that cover it? I think. So. Oh, the Mid County. Are we going to okay. extend it or wait till March? Or we can vote now if you want to. Or yeah, we can vote now. I would. Just I would move to extend it. Us. Yeah. How long should we extend it for? A year <coughs> or two? Another year. Another year. So we'll talk about it. So next you want December. Should, may, yeah, why don't we put it on the same schedule? Yeah. As a, that makes sense. Yeah. So we do all meet at the same time. And so for the coming year, it would be Tom and Bruce, and Carla, would you want to be the alternate? Or? Yeah, I haven't gone lately. But, uh, I think it's less demanding now. Yeah. There will be. The only thing really going on is the uh, uh, reports that we have to do each year. update comes out soon, right. April. You know, there's actually one here that wasn't mentioned, and this is goes dates back from quite a while too. And, uh, I know I'm one of the uh, directors on the JPIA for Aqua. Uh, uh, and that, do you recall that? Yeah. Well, about that was about five years ago, also. And I'm on the groundwater committee for Aqua. Can we formalize those. <laughs> So it's not well, on the agenda, I guess we can. Yeah, yeah. I was say for the Aqua Groundwater. JPIA item, I'd, I'd recommend um, bringing that back at a future meeting. Um, but the MGA um, could absolutely be acted on tonight. Okay. Thanks for pointing that out. That we'll bring it back um, at a subsequent meeting. Some of them, like uh, the Groundwater Committee in Aqua, uh, you can have as many members as you want. So it's not restricted to you know one per region kind of a thing or two. Well, so if any of you wanted to be on the Groundwater Committee or the Water Quality Committee or the Water <coughs> Management Committee. Those all happen in order on mon on Tuesdays before the conference actually starts. And the next one will be in Monterey, okay. so the spring. So you want to could, could have it on the agenda before then and we could talk about it. Well, anyone can show up at those meetings. So you can okay. show up and listen to it and it's very informative. I mean, there's always, um, the state board's always there and they spend about an hour talking about Sigma and then PWR is there, I mean, uh, um, the state board's there, and they talk about Sigma. That's for the groundwater committee. That's for the groundwater yeah. committee, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that sounds worthwhile. It is worthwhile. That's why I like, that's why I put my name back in for this next session. But anyone can show up, and you, you, you in fact, can get on it late. So if you wanted to put in an application, you could do it now and, you know, be on maybe in the spring. So anyway, it's, I don't think that's something we need to pick and choose on. I regret that I didn't go because I had a specific question right. in the water. Right. I don't know, just, but anyway. So, Aqua and the um, water reuse are in the same month? Uh, Aqua's usually May. March is. Oh, May, May. okay. Yeah. But that, we, we'll talk about that item when we get up to it because we do want to give you the breadth of uh, conferences going on during that period too, so okay. you can think about it. I'll wait to that item. All right. So, uh, well, you ready for a motion? I think we need a motion now. So, I'll take a shot at it. So, the Water Resources Management Infrastructure Committee is going to, um, we're going to switch Carla to vice chair and Michelle to chair, and you're going to be alternate still, Bruce, yes. right? Right. And then public outreach. So, Tom is going to be the chair, Carla is going to be the vice chair. And I'll be the alternate. Right. And the finance, we're going to keep the same, right? Yes, so. Or did you, did we want to swap the chairs on that? Be the chairs. Not, ne not necessarily. I mean, well, Carl's doing a great job. So okay, we'll keep it the same. Yeah. And then for the MGA, we're going to switch to a different schedule of going from December to December, so that we hit all these at the same time. And then uh, we're going to have uh, the, the same people, um, Tom and, and Bruce Daniels are going to be the, the main people, and then Carla's going to be the alternate. What's kind of interesting is that um, Bruce, Bruce's and Carla's aren't up until March 2022. Yep. Well, well, we were after Tom. I think that was something that was set at um, 
based on terms. Right. Oh. And I think if when you elected elected right your term oh, of okay. election. And I think if one of them withdraws, then the board could replace them, even though it's not That's on correct. the schedule. So That's correct. Okay. So if we decided that, you know, you can do it any time. Carla, which should be the yeah. one of the seats, then that person could resign, and we could put mm -hmm. Carla it, in that spot. But it makes okay. sense to do it in December. Sure. Yeah. 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 Because the elections are in November. Right. So you'll know who's. Well, we can also make all the d decisions at the same time, because it's kind of nice to spread them out so that each one has a yeah. responsibility. Right. We know. Yeah. yeah. Who's doing what? So we'll basically we'll keep that same group till next December and then then we'll reevaluate re re okay. Okay. okay and was there anything else yeah oh LAFCO LAFCO. LAFCO we don't have to do anything because and then but That's Bruce you were going to do from zone five. Oh yeah I'm going to do flight control yeah is that uh cover it Emma okay and then That's we'll second it I was going to say does somebody okay. second it all in favor <laughs> aye aye Unanimous, yay. Okay, that took a bit of time. 6.4, review and consider compensation. Good evening. Um, on an annual basis, uh, the board considers its compensation um, in accordance with Soquel Creek Water District Ordinance 1501 and in compliance with section 20202 of Division 10 of the California Water Code. Um, and uh, basically those two um, rules uh, provide for any adjustment cannot exceed 5% uh, each year of the original adopted compensation, which is $100 from um, the, the onset of this ordinance, um, plus any unused adjustment from previous years. So um, I've attached the history of the director's annual compensation adjustments that have taken place since 1992. Um, as you can see, the last adjustment that the board made for itself was back in 2007-8 in the amount of a 6.66 increase. And what happens is the board has the opportunity to look at an annual adjustment um, of no more than 5% with the option of carrying over anything that's not used on a cumulative basis. So this year, um, the board... Um, has the ability to uh, make any adjustment to its compensation based upon the cumulative available amount that's um, set forth in the memo and shown on the table um, of uh, attachment number one. I've also included as um, backup information um, the director health and welfare benefits that are provided um, to SoCal Creek Water District um, Board of Directors. Um, and this is uh, based on um, some information showing the 2020 rates for our um, health benefits plan year, which is effective January 1st. So I can answer any questions if you have them. I doubt it. So what do you want to do, folks? And I've left it the same for a long time. Yeah, it's yep, been 11 years. Technically See, less. I know. <laughs> I think we should get combat pay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, well, yeah. But, uh, don't I want to increase it then? I'm, I don't think there's enough. Um, I'm good with it being as it is. Does anybody propose something else? Or? I was going to propose an increase or some sort of review of the fact that uh, a lot of the stuff that we're doing is not meetings anymore. You know, we're down, meetings are like going to once a month meeting at this point. So the, I view the meeting itself as a catch-all for a lot of the other activities we do that are not, you know, that are not in meetings that are things that we do. Right. Meetings. How much would you like to increase it? No. No more than $101, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would say 40 and then we could forget about it for another 11 years. <laughs> This is around my time. Yeah. That's your proposal? Yeah. Um, and just as a reminder, what, what um, you're talking about the uh, increasing of $40 to the $160 per day yeah. for each day's attendance? Okay. Yeah. Is that a motion? Oh, my, uh, is it a motion? Okay. 
that's I mean, the I, I first assume one. Some, if, if that's what's needed. That's what's that necessary. That's what would be necessary to change it. Right. <laughs> so is it a motion? It is. It's okay. number right. one. Okay, Sorry. Good. I thought we were going to do all of the motions at once. <laughs> okay. Um, we need a second. I mean, I'll second it. Second okay. vote. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Okay, so that passes. Forty dollar increase. What else do we need? We forget about for eleven years. Yeah, right. No one wants to talk about it, but you know. I know. Now we go to the service within the county. Currently, it's eighty dollars per day. It's a proportional. So it'd be twenty dollar increase of that. It's always been half. It's always been half, right? Well, I'll make oh, okay. the second motion to make it a hundred dollars then. Okay, I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll vote for that one. And the last one is uh, direct staff to incorporate these changes into the board reimbursement policy and return to separate review and approval of modifications. So as noted in the memo, um, that's a separate document and it has specific dollar amounts in it, so I'd have to bring that back. Okay. 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 So we won't do anything with that tonight. But we have to make direct the motion. Staff. We have to direct, direct staff. staff. Yes. Okay. Okay, I'll make the motion. And I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Okay. Good. Now the big financial report. Oh yeah. Yeah, as, as uh, Leslie makes her way up here with her still injured leg, um, again, I know I say this every year, but to me, you know. Why don't we get our chair to sit on? Yeah, do you need a chair? I'll be okay. I'm, I'm going to make it quick. Okay. okay. Uh, we may not make it quick. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, outstanding job. We get all kinds of recognition and awards for the, the work that goes her and Ryan do. Uh, the way she sums it up in the first trend in the transmittal letter and the statistics at the back I, I say are a must read so mm -hmm. thank you Leslie for all the, all the effort that goes in yeah. else um, are you we got control the do, you podium? Want it? do you want it okay. we can operate it for you too if it's easier that way we have it on here yeah let us let us yeah, do that. I mean, that'd be great so <clears throat> unfortunately our audit partner was not able to make it this evening so the good news is you've got me and i may move through it a little more quickly than he might have <laughs> but these are his slides so i'm just going to recap real quick um, fedak and brown did perform the 2019 audit for us Please. <clears throat> it was performed in accordance with the generally accepted accounting principles or gap um, and then the next page shows that we did receive an unmodified clean opinion. And I have to give a shout out to our supervising accountant, Ryan Kinney. Um, he's pretty much taken over the audit function and he's done a fantastic job. So just real quickly on the next slide, we'll go ahead and um, they did not identify any material weaknesses in our in internal control environment. And the one thing I do want to point out that has changed over prior years that they, is they've changed the way they're handling our uh, financial accounting for the MGA. In the past, that contribution to the MGA was simply expensed in our operating expenses. And this time they took a look at it and they read the MGA uh, uh, JPA contract and they decided that instead of being an expense item, it's an equity investment in a JPA. So they went ahead and did a prior period adjustment for our 2018 financials to reflect that change in accounting, um, uh, the way they're handling it from an accounting perspective. And then you'll see it flow through onto the 2019. So what it, usually these are, you know, assets that have a value. And I don't know what the JPA has that you'd consider well, the, the contract of the JPA indicates that if it were to be dissolved or uh, an agency were to back out, that they would get the net position that they have in the agency. 
So we wouldn't get back everything we've put into so it's it, but in anything that hasn't been utilized. So it's the current uh, we would get back. bank balance, if you will. Yeah. Uh, I did a different audit with a different firm mm -hmm. two weeks ago. Yeah. And they're taking exactly the same position okay. under GASB. Okay. Yeah. It's an into uh, why this year they discovered that yeah. that was a different well, treatment. I don't thing. know, but but they did change it. The advantage to us is we don't have that large outflow in our operating expenditures, mm -hmm. so it does stand to help us on our debt coverage ratio a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So just real quickly to move through this, this is just the financial highlights. This is a statement of net position that gives us our assets, um, our liabilities, and then our net position. Our net position did increase for the year by 2.9 million, but I do want to point out that that increase was not in the unrestricted net position. That increase was mainly in um, investment and capital assets. So what that means from a district perspective is our capital facilities reserve. When we typically take a little bit of that and move it into the reserve, it's when we see a gain in, in unrestricted net position. This year we did not see a gain. We saw a $32,000 decrease. So there's nothing to move into the capital facilities reserve this year. Up there, the, uh, there's current and non-current, and uh, our operation, yeah, current, yeah, cur and non -current. current and non-current yeah. liabilities. So what that is is current is anything that is expected to be paid within the next 12 months. Or received in the next. Correct. Okay. Anything okay. Uh, 12 months or further outward is considered a non-current asset or non-current liability. And anything way, way out there is, is not distinguished from anything that's six months in a day then? No, it's just okay. it's one, or, one or the other. Okay. <laughs> and then the deferred outflows and inflows you saw there were actually our um, pension and our OPEB liabilities and, and expenditures. So, we'll so given, given that this qualification is made, is, is there any re reason as far as we're concerned of whether it's current or non-current? No, it just gives you an idea of what we anticipate our liabilities to be over the next year. Mm -hmm. And then mainly the ones that are non-current liabilities are those things like our OPEB responsibilities, um, debt that's not within the next 12 months. Um, the other thing is our compensated absences for employees that's farther out than 12 months. All of those things is what are, ro what are rolling into non-current liabilities. That's more of a cash flow issue then. Right. Yeah. It just gives you an idea of what we expect to come up in the next 12 months. Good. Thank you. So on the next slide, we've got, this is the snapshot of our changes in net position, and this is what kind of really tells you what our operating revenues and our operating expenditures were for the year. And um, our operating revenues were down slightly, mainly because of a slight decrease in um, water consumption revenue. And the reason for that decrease was, of course, um, the change in our rates that happened in July of 2018 after the lawsuit. We had to do away with Tier 2. Um, so that caused us uh, a little bit of a downturn as well as a slight reduction in consumption for the year. I thought I read in the uh, opening section that the difference between our enterprise and a business enterprise is we don't do depreciation, but yet I see we do do we do depreciate our capital assets. Just the capital. So assets. the difference the difference is in the way we handle it from a budget perspective and the way we handle it from an accounting perspective. We depreciate on our financial statements, but we don't <coughs> uh, factor in for depreciation in our budget because okay. it's not really a cash expenditure. So we do do depreciation; it's just handled differently than. Right, we just don't budget for it. Corporations do. Okay. Um, so go ahead and go to the next slide. And so here you can see the water consumption sales. Um, we're down a little over half a million this year, um, but water service charges were up. So that kind of offset each other. So revenue, revenue stayed pretty close to where they were in 2018, but we did have an increase in our expenditures. If you'll go to the next slide. We did have an increase in our operating expenditures of uh, 1.7 million. So what that meant for us is because revenues were about the same, but operating expenses increased, we did have a decrease in our debt coverage ratio. We went from a little over 3% down to 2.3. So that's something we'll have to continue to watch as we move forward um, going out for debt. What's the magic number? Uh, we have a 1.7 target. We can't drop below 1.2. And then the 2019, in terms of the assets, um, not the assets, the 
the water charges includes raised rates for part it of it. It did include the raised rates effective March 1st. That's correct. Okay. So yeah. is, is the so is the supply, the 2019, does that number reflect the cost of purchasing water? That number reflects the cost of the um, preliminary studies for Pure Water SoCal. So anything that's done in advance of um, making a decision to move forward on the project winds up being expensed for the year. Whereas once a decision's been made to go ahead and create a capital asset and we start construction and design and all of that stuff, we can begin to capitalize those expenses. And so they stay off of the statement of net positions and they just, they just stay out there until we're ready to capitalize the asset and begin depreciating it. But as long as there's still kind of feasibility or preliminary work, we have to expense those as we go. And so that's why you see a higher number for source of supply. And, and what's the marker for that? I mean, we've approved the EIR the project. The marker for us was about December 2018. Okay. But this, this covers July 2018. Right, so half of the year. So it, about yes. half a year we've started to capitalize those expenditures now. So where do those show up from now on? Those will actually stay in CIP. So you'll okay. see it on the, on the balance sheet portion under assets. Yes. And then once construction is done, We'll move it into the fixed asset account, and then you'll begin to see depreciation on it. We that's don't depreciate until it's. That's an investment, all done. not an expense, then. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, we have seen uh, an increase in our interest um, receivable. I guess that's on the previous slide. We did make quite a bit more on our investments um, this year than we had in prior years. And I don't expect that to necessarily continue. I expect it to trend downward again as we get, begin to use some of those funds that we had otherwise invested. Plus, the market's turned a little bit, so we're not getting as good a return. So go ahead and through. And that's just a quick financial highlight of everything I've already kind of explained to you um, on the tables that we just looked at. Um, if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Or if you had any comment on the CAFR itself, I'm happy to incorporate. There were some things that were deferred and some things that were prepaid, and I didn't quite understand Yeah, deferred those. inflows and outflows mm -hmm. are mainly what we're dealing with in terms of our pension when we recognize those, our pension liabilities and our OPEB okay. liabilities. Okay. Those are to comply with GASB 45 and GASB 75. They recognize those deferred inflows and outflows. In terms of prepaid expenses, when we purchase something to be used in a future period, like a software license, mm -hmm. say we bought a software license in January and it goes January to December, we only recognize half of that expenditure in the year. The rest of it's prepaid considered a for prepaid the next, for the next year. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate your attention to detail and thank Ryan for us too. Absolutely. Um, it's the, every year we keep getting this, you know, unqual, you know, an opinion that everything's transparent and runs smoothly and really appreciate that okay. so much so I'd even I guess we have to have public comment so <laughs> yes, we do. Make the motion. <laughs> we do. Um, thank anyone you very wants much. to comment on this document thank you Becky Steinbrenner resident of Aptos this is a very extensive report, and I am not good at accounting, but I do enjoy seeing uh, figures presented transparently. I want to bring your attention to page 149 of this report, um, the fi financial highlights. And again, I'll just repeat, the district's operating revenues decreased. Um, the decrease in water consumption revenue was largely offset with increased service charge Revenue due to a rate increase in April. Revenues increased 16.25% in 2018 because of the other rate increase that had happened. The district's operating expenses increased 14.57%. Source of supply costs increased by nearly $2 million or 83.11% compared to fiscal year 2018 due to increased spending on the district's advanced purified water supplemental supply project, Pure Water SoCal. 
it's been a very expensive project for you and it will continue to be so if you build it so I hope you won't <laughs> because the water transfers can accomplish a great deal of what you're trying to do with this at a much less energy cost and cost to your ratepayers. I want to point out that you are a not-for-profit agency. I want to commend your ratepayers for uh, decreasing their use by 83 acre feet. Uh, that is reporting on, reported on page, I believe it is 153. And uh, that's to be commended. Uh, so please don't punish them with further rate increases. Um, on page 213, um, it talks about the water demand offset credits, and um, I'm nearly out of time. Um, page 214, it talks about the expenses again being increased by 14.57%, nearly $2 million. Um, I, I don't understand the debt service ratio, de debt coverage ratio. There's no uh, definition in your report here. At least I couldn't find it. So as a member of the public, that would be a very helpful thing. And I note that it has been um, decreasing over time, and that is of concern, um, I think, and should be to your ratepayers. Um, the net income after uh, debt service is decreased by $2 million, and that's largely to your pure water efforts that have been, again, very expensive. Um, on page 222, two, 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 um, I have a question. It states uh, employment. Thank you. Uh, Thanks. Time's up. All right. Well, just if you can clarify, those many of those peop agencies reported as being employers within your district or within the county. And so I think that's misinformation in your report. Thank you. The debt service coverage ratio is covered on page 158 of 234. So if you want to learn more about it, there it is. And no, no. Um, and uh, I'd, I'd like to, talking about r mistakes, uh, it is a mistake to say that this transfer thing would save us money. In fact, the city has said over and over again that the cost to us after this trial is over would be more than Pure Water Soquel cost. That's the truth. So let's, uh, we need to approve this now. I was going to make a motion that we accept the report. Sure. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I believe that's unanimous. Thank you. And I think we did not take public comment on no, the previous two. So, so if anyone wants to comment on 6263 or 64. And do we remake well, the we motion? We did have we public have comment on Bob's. On 62. Did we? Yeah. Did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So 6364. 6364. Well, since there doesn't seem to be any public comment, we then want to vote good. again on those? Do we need to vote again? Yeah. You don't need to. Uh, there was an opportunity for someone to approach the podium. No one did, and no one objected. So sure. you're okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. <clears throat> I'd just like to recognize another thing that, that um, Leslie has been very diligent at in terms of uh, trying to benefit our customers. And that's where we have money, you know, we have a certain policy and it's very con uh, conservative because um, we're, you know, it's our public's money. But where, where there is latitude and it's appropriate, she has shifted money from one CD to another and try to time it to the result of thousands of dollars to the benefit of our customers. And so thank you for taking time, breathing, bringing that to our attention and, and for doing it. A lot of agencies would let that slide and don't. So thank you. This care and attention that we're, yes. we've come to expect, but still we do appreciate. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're done, I guess. Oh. We've no, we have I've got more. the next one, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wishful thinking. Uh-huh. 6-6. Six, six. No mm -hmm. So item 6-6 six, six is to approve funding from our OCR, Operating Contingency Reserve, to fund some work uh, that we propose being done by Raftelis to update the finance plan. When we did the finance plan in preparation for the rate study, it was done in summer of 2018. And at that time, we had um, some preliminary project costs, but we hadn't actually identified the supplemental supply project Pure Water Soquel yet as being the project we were going to move forward on. And since that time, we have um, noted some changes to project costs. We've also um, secured funding 
um, from the state of California and from the federal government in terms of Lithia uh, loan. So what we're proposing is that we have Raf tell us take another look at the finance plan, take a look at projected costs and um, uh, funding streams for this particular project and take a look at how that will impact tier two if it, if it has an impact on tier two in the near term. And so that will cost us 32838 according to Sanjay's proposal, and we're asking that we fund that from the operating contingency reserve. Since we're going into our second of those rates that they calculated, what period are you planning this one to go forward to? The same one. We have to, we, this is not a new rate study. It's simply an addendum to our existing rate study, so the window would still be the 2023 window. Okay. We wouldn't be changing that. We wouldn't be going back out for another Proposition 218. Um, it's assumed that the costs would be lower if there is any savings in the near term. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just do want to caveat a little bit. Um, I've, I've had the opportunity to speak with people about this proposal. And as Sanjay has kind of explained it to us, we were looking at a five-year time frame for rates. Mm -hmm. The cost savings that we project, that we anticipate from grants and loans is probably going to be outside that window, yeah. but that's why we're asking them to take a look at it again. Well, we also have to, I, I think we need to th think about what, what we're doing this for. Why, why are we doing this? And I think some of it, for me at, at least, is to let the folks know about the savings they will probably look forward to. Right. And it's unfortunate that this is, you know, this window is so tight because I mean, a lot of folks don't realize that this is one of these, I don't know if all of them, but certainly the, the, the grant is a uh, re reimbursement situation. So we actually have to c raise money to do that thing, do the thing, and then fill out a reimbursement document to send to the state and, or whoever to actually get the, and then it comes back. And so that could, we, first of all, we have to estimate how long that cycle takes. Correct. And if it takes a long time, it may not be in that window. So uh, people will get the wrong impression that there's no, not much benefit from them for all this stuff. And then they're gonna wonder, you know, what are you doing with all this money? You've just got $5 million and I, it, <laughs> sorry, $50, <laughs> yeah, $50 million dollars and, yeah. and they're seeing no benefit from it. So I would actually like to see this thing done five or six years into the future for that reason, so that we could actually show people you know, the, the savings would act eventually accrue to them versus... Well, and I've, I've kind of had to explain to people it's similar to taking out a mortgage on your home. Say you take out a million dollar mortgage for a home and your monthly payments are $5,000 a month and somewhere along the line you have an uncle that passes away and leaves you half a million dollars, but it trickles in over time. Your mortgage payment doesn't decrease. Over the length of your 30-year mortgage, you'll only pay $500,000 for your home, but unless you refinance, that monthly payment doesn't change. So our debt obligation won't change over the near term, probably. But we'll have Sanjay take a look at that based on the cash flows coming in. And as you said, mo most of them are reimbursement-based cash flows. So first we have to incur the cost, mm -hmm. and then we've got to wait for that money to be released. Next question. I guess, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, are the WIFI loan and the low interest loan through the state also reimbursements? I believe the SWIC loan through the state is going to be a reimbursement. Um, I believe the WIFI loan is drawdown. We can draw down. We we have to have been invoiced for the expenditure, so we've had we have to have the work done. We have to be invoiced, but we don't actually have to have paid the invoice to be able to submit it to WIFI. Okay, so that's one that we maybe that maybe that could might help. be a little faster. Okay. Yeah. I believe what I hear uh, Director President Daniel saying is in some way, you know, we know that our ratepayers are going to benefit by $50 million of essentially free money from the state and $86 million in low interest loan or somewhere thereabout, depending on how much we take. And so how to try to demonstrate that there is a, there is a, a, a tangible benefit and how, you know, with money and time, cash flow, that it's a, it's it's difficult, but we'll do our best to try to, to demonstrate that. Obviously, there is a. Well, tangible I guess benefit. what I'm asking for is, can Sanjay do a three year, which would be the rest of our of our account now, and then do another one on the side, which is like six years. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it's so we could show people, you know, yes, in this three-year section, you're not going to see much benefit because because of all these factors, but it will eventually come down because of these these monies that we're getting. Not Would to actually set rates. No, just not to, to set rates. Performa? Just just as a PR thing to show people. Well, it's not even a promise that we'll do that. It's just a, you know, in our best thinking, you know, with all these things we've gotten, these are the kind of rates you'd see for the next six years. Like, is there any kind of visual that you can make? Like, here's what rates would do without the grant alone, mm -hmm. and here's what they'll do with. So, there's a you can to me that's that's what I would see. Like, oh, okay, I see where that benefit's going to be in 2024 or whatever. <laughs> well, I'll I'll find out whether or not he can do it with within the scope of what he's quoted here. If not, we may have to come back with an additional scope. Because yeah. we did we did a 10 year plan of of. Uh, our right. monies, so I, I, in theory, he could do an eight-year off of that now, and uh, that would certainly tell us, uh, you know, more about what rates could be, not what they will be, because we're not actually going to implement those. Right. But uh, so, yeah. um, Give, it gives an idea. I'm a little confused. I thought we set the rates, assuming we're not getting any funding. Correct. That's right. So we assumed we would debt finance it, but in the next five years, we probably are not going to see a whole lot of money coming in from the loans and grants that we've gone out for. So the loans and grants are for what? For planning and construction or just construction? For planning and construction. So if you, if you invoice, if you get invoiced every month and then you invoice immediately every month, you should be getting back money within, let's say, two months of the initial invoice. We still haven't received any monies from the Prop Two or Prop One implementation or Prop One planning grant yet, and that was supposed to have been received last year. And you invoiced them? Yes. So it's it's slow. It's so slow because I didn't have that kind of trouble when I was doing the grant. I'm talking to other people at the meetings. Uh, they said that it was pretty straightforward. Huh? As I understand it, um, State Water Resources Control Board has moved to a new software, and it's causing some significant delays. So that may be a short-term thing. Well, just speaking to that, I'd, I've had other clients with unfortunately similar delays with the Water Board um, huh. with, with those types of funding agreements now, in the last year or so. Yeah, and to be fair, when um, the state had funding problems, they stopped paying all of them and then paid us like a year later. But that was Schwarzenegger. Well, then, um, <laughs> is, would there be a point in, I, I, I was encouraging to do this, just sort of a research, a white paper on how it could look if we got uh, got funding, and we did, we do have that. You're right, it, there's a software glitch that we're not going to get it, but in the long run, there should be a trajectory that might be worth demonstrating. And yeah, and we will definitely, I yeah. I think it's worth yeah. doing, but I think it's a stretch to, push it out too far into the future if it's going to be pure speculation. It's just sort of more the what the immediate what the immediate future is going to look like so as opposed to the original rate study. So as I understand it, there's going to be a spreadsheet somewhere yeah. generated. Could, could we require that the spreadsheet have different assumptions on how quickly we get the money back just so we can see what the effect is? Well, we've got Brown and Caldwell and Lydia Gutierrez working on the cash flow and expectations for the funding we received. So how how is that? So I think they're only than working. What Raftelis could do. They're only well. They're they're providing the data to Raftelis. They're they're providing the cash flow data to Raftelis. Raftelis has no idea when to expect these funding streams to come in. They're reliant on our Pure Water SoCal team right, to be able to Right, but if it's a spreadsheet, you that. could run it with different, different, um, different uh, assumptions, correct? We could. I'd like to see that. We will, it does change the scope of what Sanjay has proposed here. Well, it seems like that's a real key unknown is how quickly the, the money will come in. And f I'd like to know what the, what the range is and what the effect is on on rates. Uh, I'll suggest we, we, we can, um, I would imagine that can be done. The one, you know, as a, again, 
a an agency that's responsible for providing water, one thing we, we will do and what we do do is we are on the conservative side because the last thing we want to do, and we've seen this with other agencies, uh, have cash flow issues. And so they're not getting the money and they thought that they time they were going to get it. That's We don't want to jeopardize put our customers in that place. They will eventually benefit from this uh, 50 million plus up to 85 million uh, in low interest loans. Um, but we don't want to create a hiccup because that would cost even more money if you had to stop work or something like that. If you made the assumption and then went with it that the state would and federal government would reimburse us quicker than we had, uh, uh, slower than we anticipated. Oh, yeah, no, but we're not changing 218, uh, 218 mm -hmm. so the, it's still 9% for, for the entire thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we're just talking about making it less than that 9% 9, 9 each year. But what, you, what you're saying, Ron, is that we don't want to be overly optimistic and create a, a problem. Mm -hmm. And I agree with that, uh -huh. but I, you know, still be conservative. See in the assumption. Well, there's conservative and really conservative. Okay, I'd like to know what the effects of... of so of in getting paid back, I think there's two different things. One is when the money goes out, and then you're, you're talking about the assumptions of when the state board reimburses that, different right. assumptions on that. So I think there's two different things we're speaking to. Um, this is a big topic. Do we want to bring it back? Well, that's the question. Well, Sanjay won't be able to get us anything by February unless he starts off of this. Mm -hmm. We could come back later. It would have to come back as a revised thing in January to take this input, second meeting in January, and that would be uh, delayed. But well, we, can we could ask Sanjay now, uh, you know, could he do this and how much yeah. more would it take? Yeah, it would be an amendment Right, so approve what, approve what he, he's what's being proposed and then ask Sanjay, you know. What would it take to expand What it? would it take to, to explore when the money comes back and how that affects things? Okay. That you on so the same page? Yeah, so you, wanna, you want us to do a, a few different scenarios on yeah. the cash flow expectations as well as I think Director Daniels had a request for Link going out farther on the e-finance plan. Yep. Yeah. So if, if by cash flow expectations you mean when we get repaid right by you know by the state then right. that's that's my intent. Okay. I know there's uncertainties on timing and project things but it seems to me like when things when the money comes back could make a huge difference. Okay. We can do that. You're you're crystal clear on on yep. Okay, thank you. Public comment. Yes. Public comment on this. Thank you, Becky Steinbrunner, resident of Aptos. I think it's kind of amazing, actually, that you uh, that this district would um, consider paying Ref Tellus an additional almost thirty-three thousand dollars to sort of undo damage, <laughs> economic damage to your ratepayers, um, that your board voted on November 6, 2018, before you approved the Pure Water SoCal project. And I know you dispute that, but how can you not say that you did that when um, Raph Tullis presented to you on the evening of November 6th basically the information you're asking them to come back with now. They laid that all out on the table and they gave you the two options, with grant, without grant. Now because you hadn't approved the project, they couldn't put the name Pure Water SoCal on it, but that's what it was. What other grants were you looking for at the time? None. It was all for Pure Water SoCal. So the information that you're asking Raftelis to put out now is exactly what was presented to you November 6th, 2018. And he even laid it out further as Chairman Daniels is asking them to do now and said, well, you'd have to have an 8% an increase for three years after. The 9% increases st are, are done. So this has all been done for you already on November 6th, 2018, before you approve the project. 
I want to point out to you that I have heard stated to you that um, there were concerns about the federal grants because the reimbursement could take up to 10 years. There were concerns presented to your board that the state grants could take six to eight years for reimbursement. And I want to point out to you that your general manager, Mr. Ron Duncan, has made a declaration under the penalty of perjury that all receipts must be done for this project by February 29th, 2020, in order to get reimbursement. That was in one of the declarations he did under the penalty of perjury in the course of the lawsuit that's against the project in your district. So I think you need to go back to your November 6th meeting and review all that material because I think many of the questions you're asking now, you'll find the answers there that were presented to you by Raftelis. And rather than pay them an additional $33,000 why don't you go back and review what they've already laid out for you very well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll close public hearing. And I'd like to say that back then, we were looking at a $35 million grant, part federal, part state. And we still haven't gotten the federal one. We have gotten the state one much higher. And we didn't have any accommodation in that previous plan for loans. And we've gotten a $36 million loan at 1.3%. And we got a federal WIFI loan for $49 million, I think. $49 million. Yeah. And so, again, the thing we did yes. back then doesn't apply now. So we have to do something like this if we want to get a reasonable uh, gauge of what we're doing. So, what is your pleasure, folks? I'll move to approve it with the request for a um, proposal for an addendum for the extra work. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carl? I was elected I am out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so make sure I understand this and it's, it's in line with Leslie. Go ahead and, and you just approved draft. Tell us to move forward with the proposal. So if we can bring that back in late February, we'll do that. But also at some time between now and then or when we can bring back the addendum okay. for um, approval. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm clear. And I, I personally, I don't think there's much hurry to do this three year one thing because there won't be okay. any savings the next couple of okay. years. And so it'll stay at 9%, it has to. And it's only at, after time when you'll actually start to see significant uh, you know, downtrend of that. So well, maybe if we see savings in the addendum built upon this that we won't rush the what was approved tonight to be brought back in late February in discussions with January. Does that make sense? Okay. So Okay. I, you know, I, I still want to see the effect. I mean, I, yes. I think, you know, it may not be the, a perfect solution, but R I really want to see Right, it. but all I was saying, what I, what I thought I was hearing, was that you, you approve that work to be done mm -hmm. and an addendum, and we could come back with in February with that work being done, but if the addendum, if he says, hey, if I bring back the addendum work with the work that you approved tonight and there's some savings in that, yeah. we bring it all back yeah. together That's maybe fine. a little bit later than the February. That's, That's fine. If sure. that is sure. what the board desires. I you have something? Well, I'm, uh, yeah, I think that maybe um, some of the, um, maybe at the next meeting you could come back with some information explaining how these loans work. Yeah, and, you and, know, and because and, okay. if we can borrow, let's say we borrow 85 million, but then we pay back it as we get reimbursed. Can we do that? I don't know. Okay, and that's I great. I have no idea. And we also thought we would bring back, and Leslie, I think this is still on our charter, um, just a reminder of the, um, the rates and what some of the assumptions were because people are saying bills, you know, my bill's gone up this much. And it's as uh, President Daniel said earlier, it, they can only go up so much unless you're using more water. And so we right. want to show show that too. So maybe that could be yeah, a, a I've, two I've actually talked to a number of people who've seen that on um, back um, next door. Uh -huh. I was going to say back door. <laughs> <laughs> Aptos next door. And, they, and they're like, yeah, I heard all this fuss about it, but my bill was fine. So I'm not sure what it was about. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll bring. About we're usage. still going to get yeah. that information where we're seeing what the actual effect is, right? Yes. Yeah. Of what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. Bring that back. And and I just heard also maybe um, the the grants how they work 
along with uh, a primer on the, the rate study like we had talked about. Yeah, yeah. And, and the loans because, yeah. you loans. know, like when you borrow for your house, you get a lump sum and if you, you know, and you go back, let's say you, you, you're allowed to pay back part of it with over the time in, in, in an increased amount. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does that, does that work that way with okay. the yeah, loans the that you get question. from the state? All right, so I think we move on now. I think so. Six point seven approved board attendance at water reuse conference. Yeah, I would like to start. Yeah, let me and and so I just we put this on there just to it's good to make us aware of this and also as an opportunity to put frame it within uh, the other conferences that'll be going on during that time and we may not even have them all but because I know there's a California Special District Association that's I think in around this time frame maybe a little later but so march up in san francisco is water reuse uh, melanie or taj i might need some help uh in april like 17th that third week in april is a design build conference in dallas texas so that's that and then uh aqua is in may so yeah. there's three conferences that are pretty you know, important to our water industry coming up. Uh, we've heard rave reviews. If you want to learn more about the design bill, which is a process, part of the process that we're using and Santa Cruz is moving toward too. Uh, that's in Dallas and it's focused on water. And I know Taj and Melanie came back saying, this is really good information. So I encourage directors who want to explore that. I may try to do it. I have some conflicting things, but it sounds really great. And then, um, this one, we know that this is a, a really informative conference and it's local, which is great. And then uh, Aqua, which, you know, you can, I just want to put them all out there. Well, and I think our customers benefit when we're more educated and make better decisions. So I support conferences that are pertinent to. Yeah, they, they definitely give the value back many fold over. I mean, just like last, we were at Aqua recently and we're meeting with the federal government and we know know it's pursuing more funding and that sort of thing and they've already funded us so the, the return's been there and I want to thank all the directors who go to these I oftentimes can't because of my day job but it it's I think the customers if they knew the sacrifices that the directors are making that they would they would uh, be very appreciative I'll report on the aqua uh, groundwater committee next few months so I think we need public comment before a motion. Yes, we do. Public comment? Uh, I'd, I'd like to make the motion to authorize the attendance of water reuse. I'll second. So the motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I think that's unanimous. Okay, it listed a closed session, but it turns out we're not going to need one or have one tonight. So okay. if anyone wants to talk to this non-event closed session thing on the thing, this would be the time. Talk about something that's not happening. Yeah. Is it on the agenda? It's on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Thank you. I would like to speak about um, the non happening <laughs> closed session, and that is the uh, wrap up of what you may think is the wrap up of the legal action, but I am appealing it. So it's not done. And um, I have received a uh, memorandum of costs from Best Best and Krieger asking for uh, over $2,800 in costs. I am moving to strike that, so there will be legal action against that. I am filing uh, the appeal for the main denial for the writ of mandate, and I tried to appeal the uh, denial for the change of venue and that was handled very oddly. <laughs> uh, the way to appeal that is to submit a petition for writ of mandate, and uh, I did that, and the clerk told me that I could not file it because the judge didn't know what to do with it. This was Judge Volkman, the head of the appeals division. This case appeal will stay in Santa Cruz County Superior Court with the Tribunal of Three uh, because it is a civil case with, it's called a limited amount, less than $10,000. So initially it will stay here. 
I really have no confidence that I will get anywhere with that. So I want to let you know I do plan to continue appealing it to the 6th District Court of Appeals if I need to. But what happened with my um, petition for writ of mandate to appeal the denial to get it out of this county and to Sacramento County where I felt I would have a better, more seasoned environmental judge examine things is that the judge sat on it. He sat on my uh, writ of mandate. I couldn't file it. I had uh, an amended petition for writ of mandate that I know I can do without the leave of court one time to include further information and correct some mistakes. I could not file that until the judge decided what to do with my initial one. Um, and so the judge sat on it for over two weeks. And then just today I heard that the appellate division uh, tribunal uh, considered it and denied it. <laughs> so I've not served it to you because I was never able to file it. And I'm uh, quite perplexed about how this, all this is being handled, but it will then be wrapped into my general appeal for the uh, denial for writ of mandate. I'm doing this because I care. This is very hard on me. I don't want to bring this expense to you and your ratepayers. But I care about what I see as a travesty here. Thank you. Okay, so we're done. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Congratulations, Bob. Yeah. Thank you all. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Feel free to come back in.